Jim Brown, a legendary running back in NFL history who left the league at the height of his career to star in Hollywood films and lend his support to the civil rights struggle, has passed away. He was 87. His wife Monique Brown posted on Instagram that Brown passed away on Thursday night. He was a famous football player, actor, and campaigner throughout the globe. He was a devoted and excellent husband, father, and grandpa to our family. We have broken hearts, she wrote. Before Brown entered the NFL in 1957, it had never been seen in the league that a fullback could combine strength, speed, intensity, and stature 6 feet 2 inches to 30 pounds in such a way. Brown was an explosive fullback for the Cleveland Browns. While filming The Dirty Dozen, his second feature, in London in July 1966, he made his retirement announcement. He was a key participant in the Black Pride movement of the 1960s and a close friend of Huey Newton, the co-founder of the violent Black Panthers organization, as well as Malcolm X and Louis Farrakhan. Despite never being found guilty, Brown faced several accusations of violence against women throughout the years. In his 1989 autobiography, Brown acknowledged hitting women. Brown wrote, In a perfect world, I don't think any man should slap anyone. I don't instigate fights, but occasionally I stay in them. Although it hasn't happened in a while, it has happened before, and I regret those instances. I ought to have had greater self-control, strength, and maturity. In eight of his nine seasons, Brown led the NFL in rushing and he was chosen four times as the league's most valuable player. When he retired at the age of 30, he still held 20 league records, including the most running yards and touchdowns. He was ranked first on the Sporting News list of the best 100 players of the 20th century in 1999. Any time describing his playing philosophy, Brown said, make sure when anyone tackles you he remembers how much it hurts. Brown stated to Sports Illustrated in 2015, I didn't retire because I was slow and broken down. I retired because it was time to do other things and retire. In a statement on Friday, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell noted that Brown was not just one of the most formidable athletes to ever set foot on a sporting field, but also a cultural icon who supported change. During his nine-year NFL career, which coincided with the civil rights movement here at home, he became a foreigner and role model for athletes being involved in social initiatives outside of their sport, Goodell added. The Browns owners Jimmy and Dee Haslam said in a statement that he was unquestionably the greatest to ever don a Browns uniform and arguably one of the greatest players in NFL history. Brown joined other activist sportsmen, like Bill Russell of basketball and Lou Alcindor, better known as Kareem Abdul-Jabba, in supporting Muhammad Ali's decision to decline the draft into the American military in 1967. In order to assist African Americans in the corporate sector, Brown formed the Negro Industrial Economic Union in the 1960s. He also launched American in the 1980s, a program that assists ex-offenders and ex-gang members by emphasizing work skills and nonviolence. According to Brown, who spoke to the Cleveland Plain Dealer in 2013, I was basically a proponent of economic development as a way to equality, social equality, one of the first American athletes to transition from the field to a full-time acting career, Brown appeared in more than 40 films and television programs. He filmed his first film, The Western Rio Concos, in 1964 while still playing for the Browns. His rugged good features and quiet charm made him a natural for deaf guy parts. His early works, in addition to The Dirty Dozen, 1967, feature Die Station Zebra 1968 and black exploitation movies from the 1970s such three The Hard Way 1974, Slaughter 1972, and Black Gun 1972. Raquel Welch and Brown had a rare interracial sex scene in the 1969 film 100 Rifles. In his 1989 book Out of Bounds, which he wrote candidly about his hectic sex life, he posed naked for Playgirl magazine. Later films included Spike Lee's He Got Game 1988 and the black exploitation parody I'm Gonna Get You Suck in 1988. Multiple times, 
Brown was accused of molesting a lady under the age of 18, but he was exonerated in that instance in 1965. He was accused of throwing his lover off a balcony in 1968 during an altercation, although she said she really fell. Due to the accuser's contradictory evidence, rape accusations were withdrawn in 1985 and battery charges in a case involving two women were dropped in 1971. His second wife, Monique, reported that Brown had threatened to murder her in 1999. Later, she changed her story, and he was only found guilty of shattering her car's windows. Brown chose a six-month jail sentence instead of the more lenient choice, which included therapy, community work, and probation. He was only in prison for a few weeks. Later, he admitted to the Los Angeles Times that a self-improvement program that is offered in California jails helped him control his violence. In a Coralana golf course in 1978, he was found guilty of attacking professional golfer Frank Snow. James Nathaniel Brown was born on February 17, 1936 on SD, Simons Island, Georgia. After his father abandoned the family and his mother moved out of the house to work as a maid, James Nathaniel Brown spent his early years with his great-grandmother. In Manhasset, New York, he reunited with his mother before excelling in four sports as a high school athlete. He received a scholarship to Syracuse University, where he played basketball and lacrosse and was an All-American in both sports. This year, the NFL renamed the league's running championship the Jim Brown Award in his honor. For the NFL to reward a guy accused of violence against women, several opponents claimed, was shameful. To champion Brown as some kind of hero is as brutal a blow as the ones he was repeatedly accused of delivering, sports journalist Nancy Armour said in USA Today. Looking back, Brown claimed he didn't care about how people saw him. According to Brown, I'm not interested in trying to work on people's perceptions, he remarked in a 1990 ESPN classic documentary. If you don't take the time to understand who I am, your problem will be your perspective, the speaker said.